Josiah was made king of Judah when he was only eight years old. Eight years old? That's like second or third grade! Imagine being a king at such an early age! Did he have ice cream for every meal? Did he never have to go to school? Did he get to watch movies and play video games as late as he wanted? No. Besides, they didn't have a lot of those things back then. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles 34 that he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. He was like his great, great, great grandfather, King David. Even at an early age, he desired to walk with God. When he was 20, he threw out all the idols and false gods of the land. He broke down their altars and turned their statues into dust. When he was 26, he began to clean the temple. It had become run down and grimy. He collected money for carpenters and stone builders to fix up the temple. While they were fixing the temple up, Hilkiah the priest found the Book of the Law. The Book of the Law was the first five books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. It's also called the Torah, Pentateuch, or the Book of Moses. A man, Shaphan, brought the Book of the Law to Josiah and read it out loud. It had been a long time since the Book of the Law had been read in the land. When Josiah heard the Word of God read, he tore his garments. He was so upset because of how far Judah had strayed from keeping God's law. He asked Shaphan and all his men to pray so that God would forgive them. Then Josiah took the Book of the Law and had it read for the whole kingdom. All people, big and small, heard God's Word. Josiah then made a covenant with the Lord. He vowed to walk in the ways of God and to keep all of His commandments. And you know what? He did. The Bible tells us that Josiah followed God all his life. Tragically, he was killed in battle against the Egyptians by an arrow. When he died, all of Judah mourned, for he had been a great king. Isn't it amazing that Josiah became a king at only eight years old and chose to walk with God? This story tells us that even you can walk with God as a young kid. It tells us that God's word is powerful and can change a nation. What was Josiah's secret to walking with God? Psalm 119, 10 through 11 describes Josiah to a T. With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. For I've stored up your word in my heart, so that I may not sin against you. 2 Chronicles 34, 2 says that Josiah walked with God and did not turn to the right or to the left. His eyes were fixed on God. We need to fix our eyes on God. To Josiah, no one else's opinion mattered to him besides God's. God was the most important person to Josiah. 2 Chronicles 34, verse 33 tells us that Josiah followed God. We need to follow God with all our hearts. How did Josiah know how to follow God? From the reading of the Word of God. Josiah didn't just make up what he thought God wanted. He focused in on God's Word. We need to focus in on God's Word. It's through God's Word that we know how to walk with Him, what He wants from us, and how we can be saved from our sins. Don't wait until you're old to walk with God. Like Josiah, you can follow God even at a young age. Don't wait. Follow God today. army camp in my new special role. That's right, yes we Bob Sergeant Major says this is right up my alley. I bet you all the other soldiers wish that they could have a job as important as the camp cook. My mama's going to be hey, so Hey, Captain Clum. Heard you got demoted because you kept accidentally lighting things on fire and getting lost chasing butterflies. What? No, just uh, I, I defeated all the butterflies so they gave me a new job. Right! Why wouldn't we have you make food for the entire base? What are you cooking today? I'm making Private Clump's Extra Clumpy Clam Chowder! That's perfect! Our recruits need to be able to go days without eating. Wait, what? I mean, they need to have strong guts. Uh, I don't understand. I mean, I'm sure it has lots of clumpy protein. Oh, shucks, boot camp, Becky. That's real nice of you to compliment my cookie like that. It's my mama's recipe, you want to see? Okay, here we go. Simmer together two artichoke hearts, three garlic cloves, four clams in the shell, a potato, one third of a splash of milk, and a chunk of rubber off the bottom of your boot. Ah, taste me back home to home sweet home. Clump, this is a disaster. 
we're okay with bad food in the army, but not this bad food. Well, my, my recipe isn't any good. Nope. And seeing as this is a Bible boot camp, we're going to need to change it. Here, let me grab my recipe. Oh, you have a recipe? Let's do this instead. Oh, okay, uh, this says four slices of bacon diced, two tablespoons of unsalted butter, two cloves of garlic mince, one onion diced, a half teaspoon of dried thyme, three tablespoons of all-purpose flour, one cup milk, one cup vegetable stock, two six and a half ounce cans, chopped clams, juices, reserved one bay leaf, two russet potatoes, peeled and diced, one cup, half a damp, kosher salt, and freshly ground black pepper to taste. Whoa, that sounds delicious. And look at that picture. Whoa. Yes, Private, it's going to be delicious. And that reminds me of this week's Bible verse. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making the wise simple. Psalms 19.7. What's that got to do with soup? You were following a recipe that was going to be clumpy in all the wrong ways. It had a rubber boot in it for crying out loud. But I showed you a recipe that is perfect for making good chowder. And your point is? Lots of people follow their own plans instead of following God's word. God's word is perfect and it revives the soul when we read and follow it. It can even give simple people wisdom. Huh, I know a lot of simple people that could use God's word then. Exactly! If you want to help people and be revived and get wisdom, you follow God's word. If you want good chowder, you follow that recipe. Oh, sounds good, Boot Camp Becky. Thanks for the tip. Of course. All right, now we just need a little chunk of this guy. Here we go. Ugh. Oh, that's a little bit much, but I'm sure it's going to be fine. Hey, Clump. How's that clumpy clam chowder working out? So good. I just added my last ingredient. <gasps> Is that a boot? Why, is it smoking? Oh no, duck and cover! Duck and cover! Oh, would you look at that? It's ready. Clump, what have you done? I made my mama's clumpy clam chowder. I gave you a recipe to follow the good, for good chowder, and we talked about how it was the perfect recipe. Wait, I was supposed to follow that recipe? Of course! Oh, I thought you were just telling me about it so that I could learn stuff, you know, to take up all the empty spaces. Well, yes, but you're supposed to actually follow the new recipe! It's like this Bible verse says, Be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. James 1.22 You can't just hear God's perfect word and not do it. You also have to do what it says to do. That's called obeying. So, if you get a new recipe, you actually have to follow it. It doesn't really just cook itself. That's right. And now I think you're starting to get it. Got it. Good. Cool. Ruby. Hey, random soldier, come here. Ha <laughs> ha we soldier, how are you doing? Oh, I'm so good. Hey, I have a sweet recipe from uh, Boot Camp Becky over here. I would love for you to have it. Oh, how well, do I find this? Well, it's on the table right over there, and you just, all you gotta do is follow it, and it's great, and it'll be really good. Oh, okay, is this recipe? Oh, using the clams instead of the boots, Miss Catherine is going to love this. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, goodbye. No, 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 Clump. You can't just tell other people to follow it. What? You have to follow it. Oh, okay, okay, so to obey, I have to listen to the new recipe, and I have to... Follow the recipe. Right. Got it, okay. What are you doing? What do you mean? I was gonna go and practice my crochet. But the soup. What about it? You have to cook it. Well, I was just gonna do it later. Clump, this is very important. If we hear God's word, we must obey it. We don't wait around or just tell someone else to do what we should be doing. We just obey, every time. We must obey because God is perfect and good. Well, that's, that's great, but I just don't really want to do that right now. It, what happens if I don't? If you don't cook dinner, there are going to be about 100 soldiers coming in from training and Ooh. that are not going to be happy. Not to mention that you might lose your job as a cook and get put on bathroom duty. Not dookie duty! That's right, you'll be washing toilets. No, look at Becky. 
anything but that. I want to be obedient. I'll make the soup. Clump, you have just demonstrated another reason to obey God's perfect word by hearing and doing. He gives us his word for our blessing because he wants us to have life more abundantly than if we lived in disobedience. Disobedience causes consequences. Jesus talked about this in a parable of the wise builder and the foolish builder. Mm. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I tell you? Everyone who comes to me and hears my words and does them, I will show you what he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when a flood rose, the stream broke against that house and could not shake it because it had been well built. But the one who hears and does not do them is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. When the stream broke against it, immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. The wise man obeys God. He has the blessing and safety of a house on the rock. The foolish man, his house gets washed away and ruined because he doesn't hear or do what God commands. Whoa. It sounds way easier to obey. I won't try to get other people to obey for me, and I won't be lazy. I'll do what God says because His word is perfect. Oh, and also, I'll use your chowder recipe so that we can feed all those hungry troops. Very wise of you, Clump. God's word has really made the why simple today. Oh. And that's why I love Bible Boot Camp. Now, let's do 700 countries and then make this chowder. 700 Ready, countries. attention! <laughs>